I would love to give all the credit to my mom and pops for how magnificent I am, <laughs> but I can't. Right? It wouldn't do justice. I can't deny the 160 other brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers I had in my building. I can't deny Mrs. Butt, the not so crazy but very weird 167 year old vampire who lived on the first floor who always gave me tenny, uh, pennies and tennis balls, literally, for no reason at all other than Chris. Come here, I have something for you. <laughs> to which she would either pull out a bunch of pennies or a tennis ball. <laughs> I don't know why she had so many tennis balls and I don't know why it was those things. Many years later when tennis balls became my like mobility best friend for my body and massages, I always think of her. Uh, for me, family goes way beyond my mother and my father, my sister and my brother. It's everyone who truly touched me, and not in a Catholic priest kind of way. But <laughs> that building and its inhabitants, right, were more than a home. It was a school. It was a lifeline. It was my people. It was my family. 102.17 64th Road was a kingdom, and I was the prince because my father was the king. He was the super or the superintendent, or whatever you know it is. And between his two pagers and his 300 keys on the biggest key ring you have ever seen, he knew everything. We lived in apartment 4A, and above us was my sister's best friend, Michelle Maman. We were pretty tight with the Mamans from their very loud fights to the time one of their sisters ran away to our house to the time the oldest daughter got a Dominican guy to cut off his foreskin for her while he converted, which is love. Um, across the apartment from us, was 6J in the Glick family, where my best friend in all the world lived. I spent close to as many nights there as I did in my own place, and he did the same at mine. He loved my place because we had salami, and for a Jewish kid who grew up in uh, Queens who had never had salami, it's a very big deal. <laughs> when I was 14, Danny was hit by a car on Christmas Eve. I lost a brother that night. I lost family. The therapist my parents wanted me to see also lived in our building. I never really made it. A couple floors below the Glicks was my French gay pastry chef godfather, not always gay, married twice to women, but in this incarnation gay. <laughs> and the best person to have in the family, not just because he made these delicious desserts, but also because he's one of the most inspiring people I know. Across from him was his boyfriend who worked for Arista Records, and every Tuesday he brought me a stack of new music to listen to, which is one of the most influential things that have ever happened to me. Wow. Above him was my father's sister, her two cats, his mother, my grandmother, and later on my niece. Right? This melting pot was my family, and in actuality, we all did live under the same roof. There was the blackout when I was 16, and the building brought us together. Right? The building was light and energy and a safe space, and everyone pulled their cars out onto the street, and they had their headlights facing the front stoop, and everyone had the radio station, had play, was playing the same radio station, so we had that real surround sound bumping, like it was designed. <laughs> and everyone brought the food that was going to go bad, and we danced, and we played dominoes, and we played cards, and danced salsa, and laughed, and had a good old family block party. And then one day it was time to go, and my dad said, I will never shovel snow again. And it was at this time that it was ready that me and my sister had to leave the only house we had ever known, the home where all our family was, the home where we watched my father throw a man through the front glass window because he was hurting one of the women in the family, my family, our family, not by blood, but by home, by spirit. And the rest of the 160 family backed him up because that's what you do for family. You pray together when the man downstairs dies unexpectedly. You fight across the hallway when you want quiet. You fight very loudly and then you gossip about it the next day with everybody because our family has thin walls and big ass mouths. <laughs> you go to 40 Hanukkah parties, 40 Christmas parties, a couple Kwanzaas because everyone in your family needs to celebrate something. There was always a birthday party and there was always a barbecue. You shove 30 people into your tiny apartment for an intimate dinner, stacking tables like a snake that make it out the front door, sometimes Ooh. connecting into someone else's apartment. <laughs> and everyone becomes your baby sitter. The amount of afternoons I spent in someone's random apartment because they just happened to be home when I got home from school. My parents actually left the country for a month and trusted that all these people, all my family, <laughs> would just show up and watch me and my sister on the <laughs> And they did. What is family? According to Webster, it is a group consisting of parents and children living together in a household, descendants of a common ancestor. In this case, my family is a large melting pot in Queens, New York. 
160 unit building located at 102 1764th Road, Forest Hills, New York, 11375, apartment 4A. And we roll deep, and I will always love them. Mm. Woo!